Good news, finally, finally, if you're a United fan, you're going to be over the moon the day after our incredible victory away at home at PSG. We managed to win in the Champions League group stage against PSG after a disastrous start to our Premier League campaign, a disastrous end to a transfer window. We somehow managed to get ourselves up, pull ourselves up for our, for our bootstraps off the back of that incredible away win at a pretty luckless in Newcastle and go to PSG and outperform them, right? The, the injuries and all that suspensions are to be noted because PSG were missing a bunch of players due to COVID and injuries. We had a couple of players out ourselves. The team is still kind of getting uh, acquainted. So it really was a test for both teams to see how far they'd progress. PSG, of course, were in the final of the Champions League last season. So you definitely feel it facing a formidable opponent considering the players that they have, the Neymars, the Mbappes, you know the deal, good players on on display. But somehow we managed to win, man, and I'm over the moon. I have to be honest, same, same goes for our victory over Newcastle. Although the opponent at Newcastle was a far less potent and dangerous opponent, I was still over the moon that I I got to watch match of the day, right? Because whenever United lose, I just completely ignore match of the day. I don't want to see highlights of the show. I watch some goals from the other Premier League game, but I completely ignore football for the most part. It just gets me angry. But as long as we win, it makes the entire week a lot more bearable. You can kind of enjoy some of the banter going on online. And it just makes you feel as if we're kind of progressing in some way, shape or form. Now, we know most likely we're not going to progress until we actually have a change in ownership. But that little momentary bit of joy is all fans really live for. And again, if clubs could understand this, right? If they could understand that, especially United, we're a club where... They're so concerned about social media reach and clicks and engagement when really the real driving force of all that stuff is us winning on the pitch. If we have an attacking um, star, an attacking team, you know, scoring goals at free war, beating some big um, storied European names, right, in terms of clubs and bringing through talented players, right, and having kind of mavericks in our team, club legends, whatever it may be, right, just some people that players can get behind because remember a few seasons back, especially the Mourinho a lot of our fan base didn't actually like the players that were kind of representing the badge now we actually like these groups of players right even though we think the manager might be a bit lackluster we actually like these players if only the club could understand that if they put if they back this manager a bit more give him the money that he needs to obviously be successful because I think Solskjaer could prove it so far he might not be the best best coach but he can get something out of these players if he's given money to improve them so if they if they if only you could realize if you give this manager more money we're going to be more successful and if we're more successful we're going to be we're going to inevitably increase the amount of followers and engagement they get on social media. And all those posts they put up there reminiscing on our older, on our prior exploits and stuff, they'll be updated with some modern day examples of us actually lifting trophies, of us actually going on amazing cup runs, of, of us actually, you know, maybe winning the flipping uh, domestic league. That would go a long way. But again, let's scrap that and go back to the game. The game was pretty entertaining, I have to be said. Um, when it comes to a lineup considering... Um, let's just start from there. I was, of course, a bit dubious when the lineup was announced. Um, I was expecting to see Pogba or Van der Beek start. I wasn't necessarily sold on the double pivot of Fred and McTominay, mostly because I think that in possession, they're both pretty sloppy. I would say Fred is probably the best in possession, but he still has a tendency to misplace really simple passes. That's the thing with Fred. That's really odd. He makes a really difficult pass through the lines, but then sometimes the more easier pass, such 10 yards to his teammate or something on the bar line, he'll just play out into touch. So that's the thing that I'm kind of a bit skeptical on him, right? But in terms of his ability to inter intercept Harry, def Harry attackers and just generally be as a good screen, considering his slight build, he's deceptively good um, defensive midfielder. Scott McTominay, of course, gives you the passion and the heart and the tenacity and the energy to keep on running. But when it comes to actual skill on the ball, he was left wanting. And you could definitely see... When we played the game, he was definitely the weakest link in both teams in terms of uh, his ability to play on the ball, probably even more so than a Kim Pembe, for instance, right? Who was kind of a, a horror show of all horror shows. But I wasn't necessarily sold on a double pivot. Um, I was happy to see Alex Tellers make his debut as a left wing back, which allowed him to kind of, you know, get up a bit further up the field. Luke Shaw played in his basically keep pervert position, which is left of a back three. Luke Shaw isn't a competent left back. He can't play left back for any top side. But if you put him on left of a front, left of a back three, he can do a good enough job. He's got the recovery pace to make up for some mistakes. And he's good enough in the tackles, it comes especially slide tackles on Malaki to keep that position, make it his own. But I think long term, especially since we, what we've seen with Alex Teller's uh, delivery and some of his delivery on crosses and set pieces. I think Luke Shaw's got a real problem at his hands, but again, 
the competition has brought the best out of Luke Shaw. So the lineup I was a bit dubious about. Also the uh, omission of Van Der Beek and Paul Pogba. But, you know, give this thing a chance. I think in the beginning, I always mentioned that with Solskjaer, the issue that I kind of had with him was that he was just picking the names. He was kind of doing a, a, a Southgate, picking all the, the star-studded names based on their club reputation and also picking the names based on the players that he's kind of favoritism, right? Uh, the, the, the guys that he likes the most, which is understandable. Your manager, you're going to have players that you kind of feel that you can kind of uh, pin your hat on. But in terms of progressing this team forward, especially if we're going to look at a team that maybe is post Pogba, if he does end up leaving um, in the two years that um, Solskjaer mentions, we're going to need to be able to put a team together that is a better than the sum of its parts, if that makes sense. Because there's still a little, there's still some gaps in the squad that are a bit alarming. But I think if we're able, to, if a manager is competent enough to put the right combination together, it could work. So. The game started, and I have to be honest, we started pretty well. Scott McTominay and Fred as a double pivot in front of the back four worked really well. Twan Zabi at the back of the back, or the right of the back three was incredible. His first game in however months, he marshaled that back line really well. So again, the lineup was fairly well and verse and it worked out pretty well for us so much so we ended up with a penalty um off the back of Martial's excellent turn in the box which is probably a bit of a soft penalty I'd say he kind of played for that and um, the defender came up I think it might have been Diallo and Kimpembe were all over the place both of them were incredibly rash not one calm head between the both of them they both kind of reminded me of Kurt Zuma right without their recovery pace and athleticism it's, it's a shame really it feels like this era of defenders they don't really have specialist center backs anymore which is why people probably um cream themselves especially liverpool fans you know they get all giddy um about van De, uh virgil van dyke because he's might be the only kind of modern day defender at the moment out there who actually enjoys being a defender right who's not masquerading as a as a defensive midfielder his passion is defending and clearing his lines and also you know marshalling uh strikers and getting the best out of attackers you know that kind of um, he takes joy in kind of having people in his back pocket a lot of these defenders now just look like athletes that just get to play at the back because they can't, they can't play anywhere else on the pitch so Kimpembe and Diallo was shocking so so much so that you know, Martial's in the box with his back to goal, not going anywhere really, getting the ball to feet. And instead of kind of ushering him to kind of face you up and then maybe kicking the ball out of play, um, Diallo kind of rides into him. Martial feels the touch, spins around him and goes down for a penalty. Pretty stone wall. Then the penalty comes about and Bruno Fernandes takes it. Of course, he's missed the penalty already in the league. And you would imagine that he would have just slotted this penalty um, straight away home. But he did look quite nervous and he took it. So much so that um, the keeper ends up saving it. He didn't actually put it in any kind of, you know, deep corner like he usually does. Even his, his technique and running up to take the penalty is not really a concern. It's just usually whenever he's delivering it, it usually goes right into the side netting. It's kind of like Ruvan Lishroy penalties. But this time it didn't work out. Um... Kaylon Navas pulled off a pretty decent save, but then we got to retake it because Kaylon Navas was off his line by, you know, five yards, even though the people, um, the PSG players were arguing. Uh, but the takes it again and in, and in a real kind of show of bottle and drive and determination that's probably going to endear him with a lot of our fan base and again it goes to show that a lot of the problems I have with uh, Bruno Fernandes he's really wasteful in the in the final third I feel like he always tries to go for the Hollywood pass in that regard he's always going for the kind of final killer ball when he could probably get away with maybe um, pinging it off to somebody else receiving it back again to space and then going for that ball he tries to go for it all the time force that ball in which is probably why I would prefer in an ideal world to have maybe a Van de Beek play in that position that Bruno does and then the kind of the, in the 10 role and then have Bruno play as a number eight right you could usually do that right and then kind of have Popo play as number six off the left I think that would easily work in a four but um that aside what I do like about Bruno is his kind of determination he is a winner right in this in the way that he kind of reminds me of a Sergio Ramos mentality. Other opponents will probably hate him, right? Because obviously he scores a lot of penalties and he's a bit of a wind-up merchant. But he's really, really, really headstrong. So much so he picked up the ball again and took it. So I'm sure, you know, they've got a hierarchy at United about who takes penalties if you miss them. But he was confident enough to take it again. And in an act of real metal, he went in the same corner that he did in the first penalty that got saved. Kind of, you know, played a bit of chicken with Kaylon Navas, scored that. And from then on, we looked fairly confident, fairly comfortable throughout the entire first half. I thought we could have probably gone for the juggling a little bit more we have some pretty good deliveries in the box by Alex Tellez again on the corners what a joy it is to be a United fan and finally have a player that can take corners do you remember there was a period 
when and Andreas Pereira was having a bit of his purple patch and he was delivering in these really free kick ex uh, corners into the box and we were all wanking ourselves over it and then he obviously showed his real level. But Alex Teller's ability to whip a ball into the box from the corner, like sublime, sublime. Thank God we finally got somebody that can do that. Now, is it going to last forever? Probably not. But just to have that ability to do that, I'm so, so thankful for it. So that was great to see. We're probably going to have some a lot of joy if we end up getting the right players on the end of them. And I would I was kind of disappointed we went into the half 1-0 up only. I thought we should have gone up a, a go ahead because I knew PSG were going to come out of the trenches really, really quickly in the second half, which, is, which they did. They put a lot of pressure onto us. They were kind of pinning us back in our area. So much so they won a few corners. And off one of the corners, they led into the box. Unfortunately, um, Martial closed his eyes and headed into his own net. Martial had a bit of an off and on game. He won the penalty. He did some good driving runs, but his close control, um, whatever, wasn't necessarily there. I'm going to put it up to nerves, playing in the Champions League, playing back in Paris or being back in France after his tumultuous kind of journey with the Paris Nas France national team. He, of course, had a bit of pressure on him and put in... Um, I'm sure you put a lot of expectation on this match and it didn't necessarily live up to his expectation, but still the, his ability to inter interweave with kind of Rashford up front was really, 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 really important. Um, and then of course I love the formation. I think the formation worked a lot better having Rashford and Marshall play up front together, kind of pushing their defenders back and Bruno Fernandes exactly playing in that number 10 role really helped things. Um, again, I, um, Axel Twanzebi was phenomenal throughout the entire first and second half he marshaled Mbappe and um, Neymar really really well so much so they kept switching flanks in order to kind of get involved in the game um, um, Angel Di Maria probably had one of his most quietest games he's had playing against United he always seems to turn up whenever we play PSG but he had one of his most quietest games I've ever seen him for in a PSG shirt and he's always kind of his quality always shines through so that's a lot of credit to the defenders. And then I guess we continued on. Um, we brought on Pogba, who I thought changed the game. Again, I still don't understand why he doesn't start. I understand he spoke out of turn. I get all that stuff. But considering his quality and considering he's literally one of our best players, right, hands down, he needs to start. We need to be able, especially if, if we go for this midfield triangle or if we go for this formation that we're going for at the moment with Fred McTominay screening the back line, you could easily replace a Fred with a more competent player such as, for instance, um, Paul Pogba playing on the right-hand side maybe or maybe pushing him a little bit forward or making that work in some way, shape or form or maybe having it as a, as a flout diamond would work with maybe uh, Bruno Fernandes at the top of the diamond, uh, Pogba on the left, Van der Beek on the right, and then Fred playing in the kind of number four position. That would work out really well, I think, in that regard. But hey, um, Pogba really changed the game. He really added a lot of impetus, of course. He attracts the defenders, um, frees up some space for other players to go and move into it, so much so that he tried to do some really good combinations with Tellers on the left-hand side and Martial. They had a really good connection. And then I think that basically good connection across the pitch inevitably led to Rashford getting some room on the right-hand side, picked up the ball. Um, the PSG were shocking. Like I think there was a part when Rashford gets the ball of Pogba and Neymar essentially just walks away from him. Just walks away from him, right? And he kind of faces the defender, skims him, and then shoots um, to the bottom corner, hits the post right into the bottom corner. Kevin Levis at full stretch. And we are 2-1 ahead with about five to 10 minutes to go, um, including stoppage time. So a fairly deserved victory for United. Again, I'm over the moon. I hate it when we lose. I hate when I have to come on here and complain and rag and roll about, you know, and rage about the manager and the flipping organization of the club. There are some things as fans we cannot change. Um, we cannot change the organization. We cannot change the structure the hierarchy and um, the owners we don't have any input in that unfortunately we are completely powerless but what we do have is the ability to support and back the players and the manager when they're doing stuff well i just hate at the moment in our fan base where we're so divided around in front of we're so divided into camps of people who support individuals marshall fc Maguire, fc all this sort of nonsense people are only in only out we want the best for united if it's not the best for united we are going to have to call it out as we see fit and at the moment Sosha is doing a good job uh, post the 6-1 defeat from Tottenham. Do I think long-term he's still the option? No. There's more evidence that he's not the guy to take us forward in the long run. But in this moment, in this current moment in time, he is a, probably the best option that we have in terms of just getting us stable to some sort of, you know, even kill. Now, if he performs badly and we have a poor run of results, we have to say as it is and say he's not qualified for a position because he's obviously not getting the best out of those players because those players are good enough to finish comfortably in the top four of this Premier League and have a good run in Champions League. We have enough good individuals to get that, let that happen. Um, that is not an excuse. So if that doesn't happen, of course, people are going to have to be responsible for it. But off the back of this victory, off the back of what we did against Newcastle, considering how difficult we all fought these next 
next five games would be, um, you know, post the Tottenham loss. I think he's done a pretty good job. So I'm really, really happy to see that. Really happy to see the performance. Really happy to see that the players are essentially getting behind the manager and trying their best too. Because I think there's a lot of players too who definitely understand that although the manager might not be up to par, they have a level of responsibility they have to accept as well. They've, some of these players have had, what, four different managers, right, since they've been at the club. It all can't be the manager's fault. They have to kind of pull up the socks as well themselves. And I'm glad to see some of these managers doing some of these players doing exactly that um throughout this champions league game of course it's probably a lot easier to get up for a champions league game than it might be for a premier league game but regardless it's good to see the players react in a good way and hopefully we have a good run going forward in the champions league main united two psg one what a victory what a victory